What's up, everyone? This is Dr. Webb here. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure you subscribe as I'll be posting new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 5 p.m. Central Standard Time. Today, I have not only one, but two special guests. Uh, they're going to tell us all about the wonderful field of OBGYN, as well as some tips for you guys. Dr. Jamil and Dr. Idris, go ahead and introduce yourself, and thank you for uh, coming on today. Hey, well, thanks for having us. So we're, we, we go by the twin doctors. That's what most people know us by, and we're a Dr. J. Jamil Abdurrahman and Dr. I. Okay, Abdurrahman. awesome. We're yeah. both OBGYNs. Uh, we did our training at, uh, well, I did my training at Cook County Hospital. We did our med school at Rush. Okay. Um, so I we're from the Chicagoland Chicago area. area Chicagoland right. area, born and raised. Okay. Um, yeah, we, we stayed here for college, went to the University of Illinois, mm -hmm. Chicago. Like you said, we did our med school at uh, Rush Medical College in Chicago. He uh -huh. did his residency at the world famous Cook, Cook County, County Hospital. Hospital. That's right. <laughs> I, I did my busy place. Oh yeah, that oh, place was yeah. busy. <laughs> Although I did my residency um, about a mile west, so people who are familiar with Chicago will know it's a hospital called Mount Sinai, and it's a mile yeah. west of Upper County, and so we call it Mount Sinai West because we had literally the same patient yeah. population. Oh, really? I don't figuratively, I mean literally, we would see the same patients yeah. a lot of times. So, yeah, uh, nice. so that's kind of uh, that's that's our background, and we've been in practice now since uh, 2006. So wow. well, we finished. So we finished residence, yeah, 2003. Yeah, we finished yeah. residence in 2006. And yeah, we've been uh -huh. in practice ever since. Yeah, we've been practicing um, together ever since. I think we more or less decided to go into OB around the same time. I decided a little bit earlier. Yeah. Um, I was kind of vacillated between OB and, and, and GI, so I guess everything below the waist. Yeah. Uh, the reason I decided... <laughs> The reason I decided for OB was you get a, a nice mix, you know. Yeah. When I did my surgery rotation. I like surgery, but I didn't yeah. like surgery enough to do it like you know Sunday through Sunday, like yeah. seven days yeah. a week, you know. Um, so with OB surgery, you get to do um, office, and again, I like office, but not enough to be in there like every day of the week. Yeah. Um, then of course you get to do the OB, which is you know one of the few fields in medicine where it's happy, where people feel yeah. that's part of having a good time. Get a good, you get a good variety. So that was my main reason for doing OB. Yeah, and, and I think also what's really nice about OBGYN is um, for the most part, you're having nice, happy interactions with people. Yeah. Gotcha. So you really are almost like a family member. And, and yeah. I've had patients literally who come to my yeah. house, knock on my door, I have Whoa. questions. I see them in the store, yeah. the restaurant. <laughs> Up the babies, here's little so and so now, you know. Um, I mean, you're you're like a family member and, and you develop these really, really solid bonds with your patients. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and, and I valued that. And I, I wanted to go into a field um where A, I, I would I would enjoy my interactions with patients, but B, where I could be my own boss as well. And 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 that was something that, that OBGYN, that was an opportunity it afforded. I was mm -hmm. kind of between OB and ER. Uh -huh. I was thinking to myself, can I work for myself in the ER? Although now I know you can. Yeah. With all the but, but at the time, I didn't think I could, you yeah. know. And so um, I figured I'd follow this guy. And and I, I think that also OB provided continuity. That was the main thing. Because I considered ER for a while. And I was like, okay, you see them. You kind of patch them up. You don't know what happens. Like, did yeah. they, what happened the next day, the next week, you know? Whereas with OB, you see the patients during the entire nine months of the pregnancy. You see yeah. them at least, you know, once, twice a year. Afterwards. I mean, you'll see people for decades. So I like the continuity as well. Gotcha. And Dr. I, did you uh, convince your brother to uh, not go into e ER and instead of enjoying you in OB? Is that kind of how it was? No. I mean, honestly, I just said that that's what I wanted to do, you know. Yeah. And um, and then when he kind of said he wanted to do it as well, that kind of gave me a little push because I knew my wife was going to be like, oh, wait a minute, you know, yeah. what do you mean? You want to do OB, you know, it's bad hours and all your patients yeah. are female. So having him do it kind of gave me that push as well. So, but no, I think we kind of came to the, yeah, we, the decision separately. Yeah, we were kind of vacillated between that and med P. Yeah, we, we arrived at it separately. Initially, I was thinking OB or ER. And then as I got into fourth year, I was thinking OB or med P. And mm -hmm. I really didn't decide literally until the day before match. we had to <laughs> finalize the match list. And I had interviewed in med P's and I had interviewed wow. in OB. <laughs> yeah, and, and literally, I'm sitting down doing my match list and I asked myself, can I see myself? in the office every yeah. day for the rest of my life or do I need that variety of OR and labor yeah. delivery and office and and I realized I needed the variety and so that's when I ranked the OB programs but um gotcha. you know and, and it's been it's been fantastic for us I mean it's 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 opened just a whole bunch of doors you know yeah. both with medicine and outside of medicine and so gotcha. um it's been fantastic it's been fantastic and, go ahead sorry and for the uh, route of OB it requires four years of college four years of medical school and four years of residency is that correct that is right. Absolutely. Yeah. So I mean, the, the routine four years of college, we're doing your pre-med work mm -hmm. um, and then four years of med school. And then our residence is four years. Unlike a lot of, you know, kind of specialty, subspecialty um, areas, it's just four straight years of OB. We don't have that intern where you do medicine. And then it's just four years of OB from start to finish. So okay. And you guys are both in private practice? 
we were in private practice. We're actually in a, a hospital group now. So hospital yeah, so group, okay. We were in private practice for the first six, six and a half years, and it was basically yeah. just he and I covering four hospitals, three towns, yeah. and we were killing ourselves. Wow. And, so, <laughs> and so we joined a multi-specialty group now, and so there's five of us, one hospital, you know, Q5 calls. So we're only on every fifth mm -hmm. night, every fifth weekend. So, you know, it's, it's given us time to, to spend more time with our families. So. And to do yeah, and, and, and other things, yeah. You know, in fact, when we... <laughs> We decided to 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 leave private practice after we were on the Amazing Race. We had done the Amazing yeah. Race, and yeah, we were about that. Yeah, we did that in 2013, and um, pretty much right after we came back from that, um, we decided that we were going to leave. We were going to leave private practice and join a multi specialty group, and and because um, we just wanted to pursue other things as well. And so, it, 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 and and being an employed doc allowed us to do that. Yeah, and how was that experience on the Amazing Race? The Amazing Race was amazing. <laughs> it was, now. It was, it was interesting. <laughs> same time no, I mean, yeah. it, was, it was something i've always wanted to do you yeah. know i was a, a fan from like you know season one um and so being there was actually pretty surreal like you know being there with phil and kind of running the legs and doing the stuff he had been watching for years um, it was disappointing obviously because we did not yeah. really we didn't do that well um and so then you know what i kind of tell people when i say humiliating i'm kind of joking but i'm kind of not <laughs> don't win you've already lived that you know yeah. but then when you come home like people don't know what's happened and you got to do all the press and you have to live it again and it's kind of like oh what happened well i don't know you got to tune in and see and i really do know yeah. what happened <laughs> don't tune in you know so but it, honestly that was one of the best experiences like if i got the chance to do it again I, I would definitely do it it was one of those things that i think that really kind of opened my eyes to like i love medicine but yeah. i also want other things as well you and know? you know unfortunately we already are a stereotypical Black guys born and raised in the inner yeah. city. We don't like water. We don't know how to swim. <laughs> That's what got us on the show, yeah. man. We had to yeah. jump in the ocean and we uh, weren't doing it. I did it, but I didn't yeah. do well. Did you know and how to swim before? What's that? Did you know how to swim before? We, well, we took we took lessons at the Y. But <laughs> the Y and bottomless ocean, they not equivalent. Yeah. And to yeah. this day, I walk into the hospital on a rainy day and there's yeah, one security guard. And he's always like, hey, doc, watch out. There's a problem. <laughs> I'm like, ah, funny, you know? <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> but, um. Crazy. <laughs> yeah, well, exactly. I mean, it, it was it was it was a great experience, and that's one great thing about medicine. I tell anybody who's yeah. thinking about it, it opens up so many doors for yeah. you. You yeah, know, exactly. it opens up so many doors. Being a doctor, you know, people want you to, to participate in a lot of things, and I don't think we would have gotten that opportunity had we not been twin doctors. You know, gotcha. and so, uh, it opened up so many doors. And speaking about your practice, um, do you, do patients confuse you guys, or like if you were sick, Doctor J? Can Dr. I kind of go in and say, hey, I'm, I'm Dr. J? Has it he ever happened? Know, I, I, he probably could. I mean, there have been times where, for example, if he's covering and he goes in at 2 a.m. to deliver and the patients probably have groggy anyway, they don't know that I wasn't the one until maybe the next day, even though we'll introduce ourselves, you know? And I don't um, think they care, though. I mean, but for the most part, they don't care. And that's yeah. what the patients say because we're so similar. Yeah. They, they want their doctor to be there, but they say if you're not there, it's almost like you're still there. So yeah. um, most of the patients know the difference, and, and and they see us both, and they like us both. But uh, but if we wanted to pull it off, yeah, he could put on my coat, I could put on his coat. They wouldn't know. Gotcha. <laughs> uh, can you describe a typical day for you? It kind of starts at what time and ends at what time? Can, can you, uh, how does your day usually go? There's an OB you might have. You know, I mean, the typical OBGYN day, that's kind of an oxymoron because there, there's no typical day. Like, I mean, yeah. if we're in the office, for example, um, usually start around like eight o'clock in the morning, you'll go to like five, seeing like, you know, four or five patients an hour, pretty, pretty routine office day. Um, but at least in our group and what a lot of employed OBs do is they will have, you know, an office day mm -hmm. and I've got an OR day and on my OR day, those tends to start a little bit early. I usually start OR at about seven. Um, and you'll do anywhere from like, you know, one to four cases, depending on if you're doing like a major case to, you know, major and a few minors. Um, then we have our call days. We're in the hospital for 24 hours from 7 a.m. Mm -hmm. until 7 a.m. the next day. Um, and that's really where you get your biggest variety. Some yeah. call days are literally just picking back. You're on Google, you're watching TV, you're chilling after you do your rounds. Um, some days you're literally seeing like 20 patients on morning rounds. Then you're doing deliveries during the day. You're running down to the ER seeing patients, doing emergency surgeries. So it really just depends. But you, you have those, that's kind of your your three typical days, either office or or call. So I, I guess, yeah, there is no typical day in yeah. the life of an OB, but that's what makes it so great. Right. I mean, you, you, you don't wake up knowing I'm going to do this today or I'm going to do that today. You're always kind of wondering what's today going to be like, and that keeps it, you know, pretty fresh. Yeah, it keeps it interesting. Got you. And speaking about your OR days, I know you deliver babies, but what other kind of surgeries do you do as an ob -GYN? Um, so, I mean, obviously, yeah, we'll do the deliveries and the C-sections, and then we'll also do pretty much any surgery that's related to the female reproductive tract. So be it removal of ectopic pregnancies where there's a pregnancy in the tube, 
be it a hysterectomy where we're removing the uterus, myomectomy where we were surgically remove fibroids but leave the uterus. Yeah, the tumors in the uterus. Yeah, ovarian cystectomies where we remove cysts from the ovaries, removing the ovaries. So uh, removing portions of the cervix if there's precancer or cells. So anything pretty much related to the female reproductive tract, you know, we're going to be operating on it. Gotcha. And after your OBGYN residency, do most people do fellowships? And what, what kind of fellowships are available? In, yeah, I mean, in OB, there are three major fellowships. You have your reproductive endocrinology fellowship, which is um, basically where you're helping people who are dealing with issues with infertility, doing in vitro fertilization, things like mm -hmm. that. You have your gynae oncology fellowships, uh, which you're treating basically GYN cancer, so cancer of the uterus, cervix, ovaries, tubes. Um, and then you have your maternal fetal medicine fellowships, where you're doing high-risk OB. And all of the fellowships uh, out of OB are an additional three years. So if you choose to do the fellowships, you do your four years of OBGYN first, and then you do your three years of either high-risk OB, mm. gynae cancer, or reproductive endocrinology afterwards. And I would say more people don't do fellowships yeah. than do fellowships. Oh, okay. I, I don't know the stats, but maybe 15%, I say 15 maybe, maybe not even that, maybe 15% of people do fellowships, if okay. that. Yeah, and life as a OBGYN, you say you take call uh, every so often. Um, how do you, I have a lot of students who ask about work-life balance, and how, how do you balance kind of your your work schedule with your family. I understand you both you both have families. Is that pretty challenging? Yeah, I mean, Especially as I've been a surgeon. Yeah, you know, I think that it, and I, one of the trends that I'm noticing in medicine is that people are going more from private practice to employee practice. And mm -hmm. I think one of the big reasons is for that work-life balance. Yeah. Even though our days are busy because we're in a group of five and we really kind of call share, so we're in a group of six effectively, when we're on, we're on and we're busy, but when we're off, we're off, you know, and so that gives you time. So, I mean, yeah. if you're working one out of six weekends or one out of six weeknights, when you're not on call, you know, when you're not working, you can be at home with the family, you can be doing other things, pursuing other interests. So I think that that is kind of the trend in medicine in general, and there's some pros, some cons to it, you know, everything has yeah. good and bad. Yeah. But I think one of the one of the pros is the fact that you do just have more time to just balance your life, your family life, and, and just other interests. Yeah. And, and I think... It's like anything else in life. You have to make it a priority, you know. Um, our first six years, like we said, we were in private practice and there was no such thing as a work-life balance. And so we decided once we got out of private practice that we were going to make it a priority. And we do just that. We make it a priority. We, you know, we have our website, twindoctorstv.com, where we do blogs. Yeah. And um, so we set a schedule and we're like, we are going to meet this day we're going to our little studio and we're filming and right. then you know we set a schedule you know we, we 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 do like a media day like today was our media day so we'll do a local fox show and we do a local abc show and we put it on our calendar and we're like we're doing that and we clear our schedule and we do it and so a lot of it is just making it a priority you know the kids have a play it's like i'm going and, yeah. and, you, and you make it a priority and you do it. And like you said, being an employee doc, it makes it easier because you're only on one and six and God forbid something important is going on with your one and six, you can always switch amongst your, 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 yeah. your group mates. So it's just making things a priority and, and putting yourself in a position where you have flexibility and that's being an employee yeah. doc for the most part. And, and the one piece of advice I would give people if they're considering a career in medicine or starting their career in medicine is, and it's easier said when you, you've got a little bit of you know years behind you, but mm -hmm. Saying finding that balance and finding that balance, they're two different things. You've got, you know? you got to do it. Like, I remember when we were in private practice for the first almost seven years, like, there were so many times where I was like, I know I should do this, but I'm just going to go and do this delivery because this patient is, she's counting on me, she's depending on me. And you do have to find that balance between, but then you'll burn out. So you've got to find that balance between taking care of yourself, taking care of your family, and taking care of your patients. And it's okay if, you know, I know, you know, Mrs. A really wants you there. But your partner is just as capable and she'll yeah. survive, she'll have a healthy baby and she'll move on, you know. You just have to find that balance to keep yourself happy, keep your, your spouse happy, you know, and be in your kid's life and just enjoy your life. Because if you don't, you will burn out. Absolutely. I, I, I would say the last thing, uh, you know, on that point, because I don't want to beat a dead horse, but in medicine, you're doing four years of pre-med, four years of med school, four years of residency. You're focused always on the future, the future, yeah. the future. And so you're conditioned to ignore the present. But you've got to appreciate the time is fleeting, you know, and so you have got to say, I'm going to stop and enjoy the moment. You know, one thing I always wanted to do was get my pilot's license. I wanted to be a pilot before I ever wanted to be a doctor. And my mom was like, please, just I can't bear the thought. And so after I finished residence, I said, I'm getting my pilot's license. And so I literally did it while we were working. But what I did was I got up at five in the morning. I found an instructor who was, you know, nice enough to do it with me. I went late at night and I did it because I said time is short. And my time's going to run out soon. So just realize how fleeting time is and, and make other things a priority. You know, you, you, your job is your job. It's your calling. It's a profession. But it's not your life. And don't let it be your life.
And since 2006, how many babies would you you guys say you have delivered since then? <laughs> you can count. I have a lot, but I have multiple logs I have to kind of combine. Yeah. I, I have to guess, I would say, well, what would you say, maybe like, oh, oh man. I mean, if you, incl- if you include residency, I know when I left residency, I had 2000. Oh, since you thought, oh, okay. Yeah. Um, gosh, it's got to be about 4,000. Got to wow, be. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, it's, uh, we, 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 all of the places we've been, we've been very busy. Very so, busy. um, yeah, it got to be at least 4,000. Gotcha. And w- what advice would you give to yeah, someone who is, who is interested in the field of medicine or interested in becoming an OBGYN? What kind of advice would you give them? The, ma- the main thing that I would tell people, and, and this seems a little wet blanket ish, but I mean, I'm being honest. Um, you don't want to go into medicine for the money because yeah. that's becoming progressively less and less. <laughs> um, you don't necessarily want to go into it for the prestige because while there is prestige, there are also lawyers who are going after you and insurance. Yeah. Co- I mean, it, it, the prestige is not what you think it is. You have to go into medicine because it's something that you want to do yeah. um, and it's something that's going to fulfill you. And I know that sounds like very generic advice, but that's the truth. I've seen people that go into medicine for the money, for the prestige, because <laughs> their mom told them to, because their dad told them to. You've got to do it for you because it is a very physically and potentially financially draining <laughs> prospect. So you've got to do it because it's something you want to do. But I, but I would also say, yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, do it because you have that passion, but also um, realize that medicine is so broad that you're going to find, for the most part, you're going to find something that you like, but be honest with yourself. I teach a, a little course at a, a local med school here, Rosalind Franklin. And, um, you know, I always tell the students, pick the field that feels right to you. Don't pick the field that you thought you wanted to do when you started medical school. Pick the field that feels right to you, you know? Um, and luckily with medicine, the field is so broad, you'll find something. Yeah. And so that's, that's, that's one great thing about medicine. Don't ever question, is this something I want to do? Because there's so many options. Yeah. There's so many options. You know? gotcha. And three last questions. I always ask this of all my guests. You're going to give one, two word answers. Um, what is your favorite food? We'll start with Dr. I. Ah, my favorite food, pizza. I'm pizza? pizza. All right. <laughs> you Hello. know what? I'm, I'm, I'm going to disappoint, but pizza is my favorite food too. But I think <laughs> being born and raised in Chicago, home of the deep dish oh, pizza, yeah. not yeah. my favorite food, good, but the drug. So it's pizza, yeah. no doubt. Got you. And what is yeah. your, uh, one of my favorite operations in orthopedics is spine surgery. Uh, what is your favorite operation if you have one and as a OBGYN? I, I like spine surgery too. No, I'm <laughs> jumping. No, no. <laughs> no um, I just like it's on the side. <laughs> yeah, I do a little spine surgery on the side. No, um, I, I like doing these da Vinci hysterectomies. We, we've really oh, started man. doing the robotic da Vinci hysterectomies, mm-hmm. and I just love it. It, it feels yeah. so so next generation, you know. Yeah. So that's that's my favorite by far. I, I, I agree with you on that because you can, the visualization is so amazing. Like there's just nothing to beat. So I, the da Vinci hysterectomy is like I agree totally. Got you. And uh, what what is your favorite thing to do outside of medicine? Traveling. Oh, uh, flying. Well, without a doubt, for me, it's like travel and aviation. Like that's my hobby. Traveling, okay. yeah. we're, we're both right up there with traveling. Um, that's something we've always wanted to do. I think after the amazing race, it, our fire was stoked even more. We even started a little travel blog on our website about yeah. it. And uh, for travel, hundred percent, I, I love to travel. It, uh, you know, it it, it 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 gives you perspective. You know, you realize how big the world is, how diverse it is, and it just uh, it's travel, hundred percent. Well, Dr. I and Dr. J, I'd like to thank you for uh, coming on today. You're, you're going to inspire and already inspired me to reach out to you and you inspired everyone else out there. So thank you for being an inspiration to all of us. Um, if someone wanted to contact you or find out more about you, how, how can they do that? You know, so they can check out our website. It's www.twindoctorstv.com. All of our social media uh, are, is going to be at Twin Doctors TV, be it Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. It's always at Twin Doctors TV. And so that's how you can find us. Okay. T- like there's another option. Is there something else besides www? Is there TTT? I don't know. <laughs> Twin Doctors TV. Com. Gotcha. <laughs> and if anyone is in the Chicago area and they want to be seen by you as a patient, uh, how can they uh, be seen? We're at uh, our, our group is called the Vista Physician Group. We're actually in the northern suburbs, so Gurney, uh, Waukegan, Lindenhurst. Lindenhurst. But yeah, you would just call. Um, oh, what is eight four seven eight four seven two four five four six eight eight. We can just go to vistaphysiciangroup.com and you can find us there too. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, thank you guys for coming on. I, I really appreciate it. Uh, congrats yeah. on your success, and uh, thank you for thank being you. an inspiration to all of us. Hey, and thank you thank for doing you. what you're doing as well. It's thank much you. needed. Yeah, appreciate all it. Right. And everyone else, thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe as I'll be posting new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 5 p.m. Central Standard Time. We'll see you next time.